thanks for joining us on Believe. I'm Karen Laffey, and today we're going to be talking about all of these great topics that we always talk about, and in a positive way, true success, money and business, health and wellness, world news, and a topic I'm going to be talking about right now, our universe. Also, make sure to visit us out uh, on our website at believelovesyou.com and on YouTube at YouTube forward slash Believe Loves You and like us on Facebook at Facebook forward slash Believe Loves You. So our universe, let's talk about Saturn. Let's talk about all the, the surprises and all these deep secrets that have been revealed here lately about Saturn. And let's talk about Cini, Cassini. Cassini's grand finale is coming up here shortly. We've got the eclipse happening next month. We've got Cassini that is going to be diving down into Saturn's rings in September. You know, it's Cassini's been in space for over 20 years and it's running out of fuel. And what they have planned for it is that it's actually going to dive through and in between Saturn's rings. And Basically, we are going to be able to see what the rings are made of. I know they talk about gas, they talk about rocks, and even there's like some conspiracy theories about the ring makers of Saturn. There's a book out there. You'll have to check it out. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to. But there's all these different theories and conspiracies about Saturn and even like the hexagon and the moons, like how, you know, the dark star in Star Wars, that actually looks like one of the moons, uh, one of Saturn's moons, which is, um, Minas, I believe it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's Minas. But if you've actually seen any of the Star Wars movies and seen um, the Dark Star, it actually looks like one of Saturn's moons. Pretty freaky. So when Saturn, or excuse me, when Cassini actually does its final descend into Saturn, not only does it show going through the rings, but it's going to bring a whole bunch of information that it's captured throughout its over 20 year travel through the universe. And Saturn again, one of those mystery planets, I'm, I'm pretty interested to see what it reveals back with that. Um, let's kind of dive a little bit deeper into Saturn itself. If you look into what the definition of Saturn is, Saturn has been a Roman god of agriculture, has been known as the Roman god of agriculture. And is believed to have ruled the earth during an age of happiness and virtue. And it has also been identified with the Greek god Cronus. And Cronus actually is another name for Saturn. So weird, they're, they're connected. And on another subject, the relativity between the Greek god Cronus and Saturn is actually pretty interesting. You know, meaning... There's a lot of discussion about time, that in everything there is a season and everything there's a purpose throughout the heaven and the universe. So I wonder, as Cassini is taking its dive down through Saturn's rings, if that popular turn, turn, turn song from the birds will actually play. You'll have to look that up. And again, that's another subject. So with Cassini bringing all this new information, this new picture, this, these new pictures, these new... Um, ideas that come into our mind of what space is, is like outside other than the moon and, you know, Mars, the red planet. No, this planet is completely different. And I'm really excited to see what they come back with as far as like what the rings are made of, the gravitational pull, because again, it's very unique in, in a lot of different ways. So let's talk about five things that this particular event could mean. And what I mean by that does is whenever we get new information or learn about something new, whether it be something about the future of space or the future of humanity, you know, the, it's all good and, you know, to, to have a vision to see those things. But really, where we are in this very moment, what does that mean for us? You know, because all this stuff is in the future, you know, including the information we get. So, what, you know, ch new information equals change. How do you handle change? You know, when we get these photos back with the rings from Saturn, it, it may reveal to us something that we've never seen before, never, nothing we've ever thought of before. And that means change, change in technology, change in how, in, in, in medicine, there's, you know, 
in all kinds of things. You know, if you've noticed that a lot of the things that we have actually um, evolved to have been a lot of things technologically, and I don't know exactly where that comes from, but I can imagine otherworldly places. Ancient aliens, if you do watch. Okay, so anyways, let's talk about does it even matter? So this is my fourth point. Does it even matter? Do all these travels to space and under the water and unknown places, does it even really matter? Like, are we wasting our money trying to figure out and, you know, answers to things that do they really even affect us? Or does, you know, how does it affect me? I'm here on Earth. Well, it does really matter because, again, technology, we evolve pretty quickly. As we can see, technology, medicine, and if we can explore other, you know, explore other than Earth or explore other planets, explore other universes to see what benefits they may have that they can bring back and enhance, not necessarily, you know, enhance, you know, make things quicker to to make us more lazy of a society, but maybe enhance our our living and our mind or a reality of the things that we can and cannot do. So the third point is how does it make you feel? Like, what kind of action does it give you? Does it make you excited? Wow, this is great. New information coming. I'm so excited to learn more about our universe. Or does it make you feel a fear, like fear of the unknown? Like, what if they do find something crazy up there? What if there are aliens out there making the rings and of Saturn? You know, if it's making you afraid, anything that's making you afraid, nervous or uncomfortable or uneasy, should always be something you should confront and take a look at. Because we never should feel negative about new things and change. Because the reality is, is that change is inevitable. And if we can't adjust to change, then we die. But that's, a, that's another subject again. So on the second point, it, it allows us to handle what's force un, you know, unforeseen. Meaning that when we go out and explore... They give us the information in bits and pieces, which actually allows us to absorb things that we may not think about or may not be relative or something that we is so far fetched out there that nobody believes, like, for instance, aliens or, you know, that, you know, they're considered the green guys or the bug eyes or whatever. But really, aliens are life, other life forms that we're just unable to identify. You know, we are actually aliens on this planet, some say. So and then my last point is evolution. We evolve and learning information getting new information from different places learning about different things allows us to expand other possibilities and evolve and so i feel it is very important that we're constantly seeking other planets under underwater antarctica or wherever to see what else is out there you know because we only know what we don't know and with what we do know we can take and make ourselves powerful <laughs>